main kill shit Slow main kill this shit My old bitch gone through it When the roof come off I feel the wind Eggs I'm finna take a spin Roll up and then I forget I'm in the drop top coop again I'm in the drop top coop again much bro how about you nothing just chilling uh first of all i want to thank you for coming on the podcast of course bro anytime yeah i discovered you from your song uh ride alone uh i really thought it was a great song uh let everybody first of all let everyone know where you're from and how it was in your area where you grew up all right so i'm from glassboro new jersey it's on the south side of jersey and i mean it's like it's a pretty cool place. There's nothing like too crazy about it. Like, I mean, like, there's like parties and shit, and maybe like some violence here and there, but like, nah, it's, it's not none too crazy. Yeah, you're you're in uh, Glassboro, you said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're you're South South Jersey. Yeah. Okay. Bet. Um. So when you were growing up and stuff, uh. Just say like through middle middle school through high school. What were you listening to music wise? So in middle school, I was listening to more like rock shit, like <clears throat> like I was listening to like corn and like 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 death tones and shit like that. But then once I got into like uh like high school, I started getting more rap. Like I started getting a, a future. Um I'm trying to think who else. Uh fuck. Like future young thug. Um, yeah, like shit like that. And future's still like my favorite rapper to, to this day. Like he's fire shit. Yeah, no, future's the go. Yeah, for real. So you're in high when did you start? How old were you would you say when you started making music? So I started playing drums when I was like like eight years old or something like that and then i i switched over to guitar when i was in seventh grade like i started playing guitar i started singing and uh the first time i like ever started making like rap music was like eighth grade early high school and i was making like some weird shit like it was like some like screamo like uh like suicide boys ghost main type shit like that like XX Tension shit. Yeah, yeah. Like I was screaming on the songs. The beats were loud as fuck. And and then now I I took like a year break and then I went to like more chill shit after that. Yeah, that the XX Tension shit though, I guess in the time when you were doing it was was kind of the end thing to do though. Yeah, it was huge. Like everyone was doing that shit. Cause I, I started from my one friend was he was um he was making soundcloud shit and he was like blowing up all over the school and i was like maybe i should try this shit because i'm like low-key kind of good with music yeah no that that shit was huge during that time especially like during the soundcloud era um so how old are you how old are you right now i'm 18 okay are you still in high school now no i just graduated okay um so obviously like there's a difference between like you know like fucking around by yourself making music like you know going to the studio fucking around or like you know just freestyling and stuff but yeah. when did you get the confidence to like drop something publicly because you know once you do that it's kind of like free game for anyone you know or anyone that sees it to say whatever they want about it <laughs> well I never really, like, really had the confidence until, like, later on. Like, I started really 
release and shit and i was like super nervous when i released it i was like people are gonna not fuck with this at all but i was like fuck it bro i fuck with it so like who cares and then a few years later like i draw i rebranded myself and like started smoking weed and shit and started making more chill shit and uh and i dropped this song called bliss and like i posted like this video like on my Snapchat, my Instagram and all that. And everyone was like, damn, bro, that shit's crazy. So I was like, that's when I really started getting the confidence. And I was like, really like, just releasing constantly, like, at, like once or twice a month type shit. Yeah, that's one of the first things I noticed about you when I discovered you and started going through your music. Like in 2022, you dropped six albums. You already have two albums out this year. Talk about your work that your work ethic, because you you put out a lot of fucking music. Like, talk about your process of, the let's say like going into like how, because everyone could drop a single whenever. But what's your process when you go into like an album? Is it is it kind of just you drop your hottest shit you have at the time, or or do you like have a concept? How do you go th- through that? So like I make my own beats. So I like I started out as a producer. And I use like FL. So basically I'll like I'll just make like 20 something beats and I'll pick up like pick out like a bunch of them that kind of like fit a certain vibe. And like and then I'll just I just kind of like go bar for bar. Like I don't write anything. I just kind of like freestyle type shit. So I'll pick a bunch of beats and I'll probably make like 30 more like in the process and I'll have like a folder on my computer. And I'll be like, and I'll just like kind of mix the songs together. Like I'll put them on like a SoundCloud playlist and like, and then I'll start listening to it and mixing the songs where I want them to go. So like, I mean, I don't know. It's just kind of like, it's mostly just like whatever songs fit, uh, mix, fit the vibe type shit. Yeah, that's dope. So when you're making... Cause you're putting out a lot of music. Are are you doing this at mainly at home? Yeah, bro. I, I just do it like right here. Like I just make the beats on my computer and then I do it all in FL. That's dope. Um, mm-hmm. so obviously you're independent right now. Um, fully independent. What do you think you need most? Like if you could say like one or two things, what do you think you need most to take your career like to the next level? Like, what do you think it is that you're missing? Uh, I mean, I think my, like, the music there, like, I I think my music's pretty good. I think it's just probably, like, not enough people are, like, seeing it. Like, they're not, like, I've been promoting it for a long-ass time, but I don't think a lot of people are, like, really, like, seeing it and then wanting to click on it and, like, give it a try. So you think it's more, like, a fan base kind of thing? Yeah, I think so. Like social media, like like a whole like community type of thing. Yeah, I think that's a a lot of artists. You know, I I have a lot of artists. You know, obviously coming on the underground series now, but I've talked to tons before I started the underground series, and it's kind of like a lot of them have really good music, and a lot of people are really talented, but it, it seems hard for people to get you know, like people to engage in their shit and the people that are engaging in their shit know they're dope. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, kinda like, and it's only so much you can do like by yourself. That's facts. Because there's so many artists out there. It's like hard to compete. Yeah. So would you be open to like signing to a label if, if they approached you? Like what what's your thought on that? I mean, I'd be down for it. It just depends on, like, the circumstances, like, like what I'm getting myself into. Because there's a lot of, like, I heard a lot of stories about people getting into labels that, like, that just control their whole life and shit. And I don't want to do that shit. Yeah, that's funny. Every underground artist so far that I've had on this series always says that, like, it has to be the right thing. And I just feel yeah. like when I was when I was growing up, it was so different. Like, if anyone, like, because there wasn't that information about out about it really because the social media is huge now but back then yeah. like if someone gave you a record deal like you're fucking signing yeah, that that's sh- that shit's big yeah so like now it's just there's so much information out there that 
that I think it's like people are more smart, but also I think it's harder if you don't have the big machine behind you because they could put your face places. I think that's what you're missing too. Your face needs to be in more places. Yeah, that's facts. I mean, like I try to do that. Like I use like pretty much every social media platform and I like try different things, but like some of them kind of work and like some of them don't like I put like a lot of ads out there and shit and then they'll like, I don't know, I'll put like a hundred dollars or like something like that into like ads and then they will like, like the numbers will be there, but like the community isn't there. Yeah. And also I think <clears throat> like also for artists too, I think they get discouraged. Cause like you said, like it'll be like that, but it really does only take one big song. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? It only, it really only takes one to like, you know, to blow up for people to repost and then people go check out your shit. And like, like someone like you, like you have a discography of so much other shit. Like I think having that much music out is a good thing because people can go back and be like, Oh shit. Like, like it's the best when you discover someone and then they're dope. And then you go back and like, Oh shit. Like they have so much shit I can listen to. Yeah. Right. Cause that's, that's the main reason I did it was like when I do blow up, like people won't get tired of me because i got so much i got like what like eight or nine albums out or some shit like that like i deleted a bunch on like main streaming platforms but i got like a bunch of other shit on like soundcloud and all that and i got like soundcloud exclusive so like i don't know i feel like there's a lot of like i feel like if i do blow up nobody would get they wouldn't get tired of me low-key yeah so when we talked earlier about uh like how you started rapping first like the screamo shit like people you know people put it in that category and then now your music like the shit that i checked out it's more like you know chill like smoke weed kind yeah. of music. you know what i mean like mm. not, not like not completely like Wiz Khalifa shit but like chill like like the vibe is like yo let's smoke a joint and listen to this kid's music you know what i mean yeah yeah so who who are your, some of your influences like with, with your music? Uh, Future for sure. Uh, Chino Moreno from Deftones. He's the singer. Uh, uh, I fuck with Yeet. Um, uh, Lil Uzi, Cardi. You got people like I don't know. There's like people like Mac DeMarco. Like all types of shit. I just I fuck with everything really. Yeah, that's dope. Um, so I ask everybody this question, no matter how big the artist, uh, how underground. If you could have three dream features, not on one song, just like three people, anybody, three dream features, any artist dead or alive, who who would it be? Oh shit. Um <laughs> three dream features. I'm going to say, fuck, probably the, maybe like the dude from Led Zeppelin, John, the, what's his name? Robert Plant. Um, I don't know. I feel like me and Michael ja Jackson could like tear some shit up. Um, uh, fuck. And probably... Definitely fucking uh the dude from Deftones too. That's fire, bro. I think you're the first artist to not uh put like a mainstream or old school rapper and I like those answers. Yeah. Do you do you think um so when I was checking out your shit, I saw that um if you want to let people know, you're in a, another group, right? Yeah, I'm in a band called Stasic. Yeah, what what kind of band is it exactly? It's like punk rock, like alternate rock. All, it's just like a bunch of genres like mixed into one. And it's just me and my other homie that we've been doing this shit. It's like, I don't know. It was, it was like an idea that we started like a long ass time ago. And then we started like writing songs and now we're doing shows and shit. And it's like pretty fucking crazy that we're actually like getting paid for it now. Yeah, tell everybody the name, name of your group so they can check it out. It's called Stazic, S-T-O-Z-I-C. It's on every platform, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, all that shit. 
do you think being in how do you compare being in that group and making that kind of music to uh your hip hop career? Do you feel like one's doing better than the other? Do you feel like um you enjoy one more than the other one? Uh I feel like like they're not they're kind of doing equally as good but like in different ways. Like with our band it's like more local like people in like South Jersey will like recognize us and shit like they know they know that we play shows like around the area and shit with me it's more like like people from like other places know about just me like a lot of people don't really know about just me in South Jersey but like they know about my band in South Jersey like we're I don't know we're kind of popping off right now though yeah that's dope um for for just your hip hop career, actually, we could do both. Where do where do you see your career? Let's say, uh, one year from now, like, where's your, what's your hopes to where your career will be a year from now? Uh, I'd like to be like playing shows like in in both like, not just in Jersey, but like other places on the East Coast, maybe West Coast too, if we can. Um. And hopefully have, like, an actual, like, fan base and shit, like, that of people that I could just, like, talk to and, like, like help out and shit like that. So, like, yeah, that would be pretty fire. Yeah, that's dope. I like that you said that part because about helping your fan base, too, because, like, um, I feel like there's a certain point, like, especially when you discover an artist, like, before they really pop off, like, it you have that feeling at least that you could like, you know, contact them almost like yeah. they respond like a lot or they talk to their fan base a lot. And then there's that point where like, you know, you, you can't reach them anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Facts. Like people DM me like that. I've never even like heard of before. Like I have like a few artists that are like from weird ass places. Like this one kid from like Texas and like that makes like more like Southern type rap music like uh i don't know like three six mafia type shit yeah that's their influences down there yeah and then like and then i got like north jersey and like some west coast and shit like that but really like my main reason for like doing this i mean it was for me at first like just to get like my feelings out because i was like if i'm like mad or sad about some shit i'll just like I don't even write anymore, so I just, like, bleed words, like, onto the song and shit that, like, mean a lot to me. But, like, other people can, like, relate to it type shit. Yeah, how's that feel to you when, like, you get that random DM from somebody reaching out, like, or just, like, anything, like, any good response? They're like, yo, that shit's dope, or, like, you know, someone's like, yo, I really enjoy your music, like, this helped me. How's that make you feel, like? when they hit you up dude that shit's amazing because like this is like my dream and shit so like it's great like just to be able to like help people through times is like that shit means a lot to me like just because i'm going through something and i'm just like yelling words into a microphone and they're like oh yeah that shit like i felt that like when you were talking about like like some dark ass shit like I was going through the same shit too. Yeah, that's dope. Um, yeah, I think sometimes artists don't realize how much you know they help people through their day. Mm, yeah. So, what's your plans? Uh, what can your fans expect, or anyone who checks this out? Um, what can they expect from you in the next uh few months coming out? So I just dropped a song literally yesterday. Like. It just came out yesterday. It's called Find You. It's on all platforms. And I'm working on a new album right now, but I really want it to be, like, amazing. So I'm, like, going to take my time with it. So that'll probably be out in, like, the next few months. And I got more singles coming out. Like, I got another one coming out this month that I haven't announced yet, but because I don't really know the name of the song just yet, but it's coming out like either end of this month or beginning of next month. And what's next with uh your group? 
Uh huh. We got an EP coming out soon. We just dropped a single called Tall Lines. Uh, we got a show. We got a show in October twenty first. I think I don't. I forget where it is, but it's we'll announce it on our Instagram and shit. And then we should be doing like a Halloween show in Glassboro somewhere at this one place. But yeah, we'll announce all that shit. That's fire, bro. Um, Before we get out of here, if there's anything else you just want to say to the people that are going to watch this, and also um, if you just want to tell everyone where they could find your music, if you just want to like spell out your social media for them and uh, your group social media. Okay, so basically just like be yourself. Don't listen to nobody else. Like that shit's corny as fuck. Don't try to be like nobody else. I'm me, you're you type shit. And my Instagram is Slaughtermain and J. And my group social media is Stazic, S T O Z I C underscore. So yeah, and check us out on all platforms. Yeah, definitely, bro. Um, I want to thank you for coming on the podcast, especially. Mm. Um, uh, I'll try to do everything I can for you, obviously. Yeah. Being from New Jersey, anyone from the state, I yeah. always put that little extra push for. Word. No doubt, bro. Um, 